In this video, I will explain what galvanic corrosion is and how a galvanic isolator and transformer works. This is what I will talk about in the video. As you can see, we have a lot to talk about. I'm Nick, author of Off-Grid Solar Power Simplified. With my book, website and YouTube channel, I've helped hundreds of people design their own off-grid solar power system. Let's get started. What is galvanic corrosion? It occurs when two different metals are in contact with each other in the presence of an electrolyte, in this case seawater. This contact creates an electrical reaction where one metal, called the anode, corrodes faster than it would on its own, while the other metal, called the cathode, is protected. If not properly managed, this process can cause significant damage to a boat's metal components. Here are some images of damage from galvanic corrosion. You can compare galvanic corrosion to a battery. Imagine two different metal rods inserted into an electrolyte. This setup creates a voltage difference between the rods. The metal in the weaker rod gives its electrons to the stronger rod. That weakens the structure of the weaker rod. In the presence of stray currents from the marina, this process can happen even faster. This is what we want to prevent from happening on our boat. Here is a table with different metals and their specific voltage in seawater. Bronze has a voltage of minus 0.2 and zinc has a voltage of minus 1. The difference between these is minus 0.8 volts. The zinc is the most negative of the two metals, so it will give its electrons to the higher voltage metal, which is bronze. That's why sacrificial anodes are made out of zinc, but more about this later. There are two primary ways galvanic corrosion can occur. The first one is natural electrochemical reactions. When two different metals, like aluminium and stainless steel, are in contact and immersed in seawater, a natural electrical reaction occurs, creating a small DC voltage. This leads to a current flow that causes the more reactive metal to corrode. These can be two metals on your boat that are in contact with seawater, like your rudder and propeller. The second one is through shore power systems. When a boat is plugged into shore power, differences in potential between the shore ground and the boat ground can create a small DC current. This current can lead to galvanic corrosion. Other boats in the marina can add to this effect. We have several options to reduce galvanic corrosion. First, we need to distinguish between when the boat is connected to shore power and when it's not. When your boat is connected to shore power, a galvanic isolator helps prevent galvanic corrosion by blocking the low voltage DC currents that can flow through the shore power ground connection. This interruption prevents the electrical reaction that causes corrosion, while allowing AC fault currents to pass through for safety. There are two diodes in series. One diode has a voltage drop of 0.7 volts. Two in series will give a voltage drop of 1.4 volts. This is the maximum voltage difference between two metals in salt water. The voltage difference will be lower, thus will get blocked. An isolation transformer completely isolates the shore power from the boat with a transformer, effectively working like a power generator with a separate earth. I'll talk more about wiring these two later in the video. When the boat is not connected to shore power, sacrificial anodes take over. They are made of zinc, aluminium or magnesium. These are more reactive than your boat's metal parts. They corrode instead of your boat's precious metal components. Attach these anodes to the hull, propellers, shafts and other underwater metal parts. Check them often and replace when needed. It could be that your anode wears faster when you are in the marina. If your neighbor doesn't have sacrificial anodes, the stray current from their boat will eat away your anodes. We should bond all the metal parts on the boat together to ensure they are at the same electrical potential. This minimizes potential differences that cause galvanic corrosion. 
Here are some examples of sacrificial anodes. You can see a long anode on the back of the USS Greenville. On the right image you can see several anodes on the rudder and the propeller shaft casing. Let's talk about the galvanic isolator and how it should be wired. The galvanic isolator should be installed in the ground wire of the shore power connection. This setup allows AC fault currents to pass through, while blocking stray DC voltages that cause galvanic corrosion. It's important to check the functioning of your galvanic isolator. If one or more diodes blow, the isolator will no longer provide galvanic separation, leaving your boat vulnerable to corrosion. For a more maintenance-free option, consider using an isolation transformer. By completely isolating the boat's electrical system from the shore power system, an isolation transformer eliminates the path for galvanic currents entirely, providing superior protection against galvanic corrosion compared to a galvanic isolator, which only blocks low voltage DC currents. An isolation transformer also filters out electrical noise from the power supply and acts as a fault isolation device. If a fault occurs on the shore side, it will not affect the appliances on your boat. When the boat's negative wire is bonded with the ground, fault current can travel through the negative wire to shore. The isolation transformer breaks this connection to shore earth, creating a separate power grid on the boat. The transformer's metal core acts as the ground connection for the boat's residual current device ensuring safety while preventing galvanic corrosion. Isolation transformers are more expensive than galvanic isolators, but they offer more protection and benefits for your boat's electrical system. Some isolation transformers can switch from 120 volts AC to 230 volts AC, useful if you're crossing the ocean. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel to keep updated when I release new videos. You can watch these videos next. And I will see you in the next one.